What's up everybody? Welcome back to Make It Custom. I'm Carl Fisher. I'm back on the 1939 Lincoln Zephyr four-door to two-door chopped coupe conversion project. Um, today we are going to do, we're going to continue on with the pillars. So in the last video you guys saw I used hand tools and I made this pillar cap. Well, it's the same day and we're here. We're going to make the other side, but Elio's great idea. Why don't we try and make the other side with all the tools? So we did hand tools on this one. This one, I'm gonna use a bead roller. We're gonna, we're gonna bead roll this edge. We're gonna use a power hammer to stretch the crown into this area. Uh, we're gonna use the English wheel to roll. We're going to stretch this edge, perhaps with the English wheel. We'll still use the kick shrinkers as well, but I just wanna show you guys that you can do this in multiple different ways. The real core message in both these videos, the last one and this one, is where to identify shrink or stretch and to do that and you can do shrinking and stretching in multiple different ways. So um, that is how this all kind of is hopefully gonna make sense. So don't forget to like, click subscribe, hit notifications and let's make this other pillar cap with all the tools. All right, so we still have our piece that we cut in the last video still the same day. Um, what I'm gonna do is the same thing. I'm gonna mark out on this sheet where our areas of shrink and stretch were. So we had, well, we kind of know from the other one that we have a little bit of stretching to go along the bottom. We have, you know, this would be bead rolled on this side. So this is, that's, that's the bead rolled side, right? So bead rolling. This end is where we have these shrinks that we put in, and the mother tucker kind of took a little bit too much there. So and we have to turn it upside down. Um, this one, well, it's like this when it's on the car, and then it's like this for when we need to see okay. our shrinks. Um, Just making sure. Yeah, no, definitely. But I guess if we're stretching, we'll be looking at it from the other side as well. This area, I think instead of shrinking this, we will put a couple shrinks with the kick in the side and we'll stretch this area a little bit with the power hammers. So I think here we'll get a little bit of stretch down from here all the way up is kind of our tapered, our tapered roll. So this is like a, an R2. R, R, R2 down here. That's a two radius going this way. We know that because we checked it with a radius gauge on the last one and it goes up to a, uh, a four. So R4 up here and it kind of tapers along this edge. So uh, I think the first thing we're gonna do is we will stretch this area a little bit here and maybe kick shrink a little bit on the edges and then we will roll again with the English wheel and the rubber tire. Uh, we'll roll this form into it and then we will uh, use the probably the English wheel I guess or even the power hammer and stretch this edge a little bit to allow us to have that slight reverse curve in this spot at the bottom of the pillar. So um, yeah once we do all that then we'll bead roll the actual window edge. Okay first things first power hammer. All right, so up there we knew it was a uh, number four. So I'm just gonna find the four, look at that. First time. That's the die we're gonna use. If you guys are unfamiliar, this is the Sosa Metalworks Shape-O-Matic. I bought the uh, builder's kit. So basically it comes with everything but some of the frame material for you to build your own power hammer, kind of most bang for your buck that's out there, I think. Um, yeah, anyway, check them out, sosametalworks.com if you want one.
minute. Yep. <laughs> Making sure we're going the right way here. So basically, when I'm using the power hammer to stretch, um, it's much like shrinking where closer to the edge, you need more shrink. Well, if you're stretching, closer to the center of your crown needs more stretching. So there's more hammer hits in this area than there is in this area than there is in this area. That's kind of how growing a bubble type crown works. So um, we've got some shape in there now. And uh, the beautiful thing about choosing the right radius lower anvil when you're doing this type of work is that it's very it's a little bit more difficult to go too far you're not really going to make this material um, a different radius than your lower anvil it's going to kind of stop there you can go too far don't don't quote me on that because you can stretch too far past that but for the most part it's there to get you a uniform shape when you're using the correct anvil so i think i'm going to go to the uh, english wheel now um, we've got a number two uh, lower anvil on the English wheel still from making the last piece. So I'm just going to run it through a few times here. Ooh, that is super tight. Right now I'm kind of just adding form. This isn't really adding, it's not really changing the shape as in it's not adding a shrink or a stretch. It is just forming the roll profile, I suppose, of the pillar. Okay, now you can kind of see what shape we're developing. We've got this happening in all directions and then just a bit of a form here. We're still going to have to stretch a little bit on this side. Let's go have a look at it on the car. It still has a very, very long way to go. Right now I'm just, just forming it, just bending it until it's in kind of the right arrangement. I'd say there's quite a bit of shape up top here. We do have to roll this into this section for the drip rail. That's kind of like a tapered roll. Here, I'll, there's one over here. Let's 
So we're, we're definitely gonna have to put our tapered roll into this section. I'm just gonna kind of mark approximately what the center of the valley is here. Kind of going like this. I'd say it tapers kind of like that, where this is gonna have to roll in to do this curve. Um, we're definitely going to have to do our, our little bit of stretching in this area. Just a little bit of stretching there. That's to get the reverse curve in this cowl transition. Allow that to drop down. And we're definitely gonna have to run through the English wheel a couple more times and bend this more. Because this doesn't have much shape in this area. This just needs to be bent in more. That's why that is not fitting. So let's go back to the English wheel. We will add a little bit more bend in this, kind of in this area to bring this in. And then uh, we'll have to do something about this. Might have to start it in the sandbag, start knocking in, start blocking in this little relief and then maybe run it out with the English wheel. If you don't have a rubber band for your English wheel, you can use tape. I don't know for how long I used to just use tape. A little too tight. Okay, and I know that from the last one, we have a little bit of shrinking to do on these edges as well. So we might have to go to the kick shrinker soon. But I am going to start just blocking in this little relief here that's part of our drip rail. So I'm just gonna put the sand in the bag in such a way where I can get a nice, nice backer on it. Use the sharp end of the mother tucker. All right. So I think I might actually go to the power hammer and stretch that a little bit. It needed to fall into that. So we could stretch it a little bit with the shape of matic <clears throat> Okay, hey, this isn't a, a linear stretch die, but if you work an area enough stretching, um, you can do that type of stretching with it. So we're gonna have to rearrange the panel. It's kind of been knocked into a weird shape here. So I'll go back to the sandbag and just try and add some of the shape that it had back into it. This just sort of flattened all out. Get that sitting down.
Okay, let's have a look, see what we got. <clears throat> Started our descent into this groove. This is flowing nice. Um, right now, because I've bent this to touch, it has puckered right there. So that spot, like I was saying, that spot when your edges get waves in them, it's, it's asking for shrink. So um, I'm gonna shrink this edge a little bit to allow for this to be there because that's what it needs. It's gonna be a little bit of the same thing on this side. Let's go to the kick shrinker. People always ask me like what, what tools are kind of like must haves when you're, when you're trying to get into this type of work. And if you're, you know, just doing your own projects and you're in the garage, you can do a lot with hand tools, but you know, uh, an inexpensive shrinker stretcher, it, I think is kind of a must have, um, you know, an inexpensive English wheel to smooth things out. I think that's, you know, important as well as hammers and dollies, that kind of thing. But, um, yeah, the shrinker stretcher really helps tune edges up because otherwise you're trying to like tucking fork and edge and try and hammer a little shrink into something when you can get you can get shrinkers for relatively inexpensive, I'd say. Okay, let's go have another look. Actually, why don't we stretch this little spot here first? Um, let's do it on the power hammer. The other cool thing about the power hammer is that like, it's not just shrink, just stretch. You can kind of shape things around in there too. You know, like if I, if I want to stretch, I'm about to try and stretch this up a little bit. You can kind of just put that in there and work it where this is just hitting it and rolling it over. And then you can hit it harder and stretch that area if it needs it. Like those are the things you can do just by kind of working it. It's not just for thumbnail dies and, and then planishing. Yeah, I'm just like lightly hitting it. And, and I've rolled that, I put that roll into it. I just lightly hit it. Now I'm gonna stretch this area a little bit so that that reverse curve can happen. So I, I did stretch a little bit of this edge because there's a slight radius there. And then, I, and then I sort of beat that up a little bit. We might have to knock that around with the sandbag to get the shape back. I did go too hard on that edge. You heard it like kind of whack, 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 whack. Accidental. You don't really want to slam your edges, but I did, so. Okay, got a, a little bit of shape in there. Okay, so some of this bend came out of it. So we've got to get that back. I'm going to go to the uh, English wheel. Getting closer, but I think we have quite a bit more work to do. Okay. 
We almost have too much curve here and not enough right here, so we're gonna have to go back to the English wheel. It's always a lot of back and forth with this stuff, right? Okay, so I'm seeing that it needs a bit more shrink in here to allow this to fall in a little bit. Okay, getting closer. I think that's right where it's supposed to sit, right there. Almost like it needs a twist. Yeah, I'm just gonna mark it. Well, it definitely needs more like, uh, bend here, you know? Mm. Like this has to come over. Okay, we definitely have to roll right here. See, right there needs a bend. help this come over. And then, I guess all this needs to be tipped over to match up with this, hey? Like this round shape, it flattens right out here, but that's what was full of lead, right? We want to keep that nice profile. Yeah. So we've got to, got to add a little bit of that shape into this. <clears throat> Actually fits great down there. It's great. Okay. Now I think up here, similar to the other side, because we've got this trough we're trying to develop and it's got a little bit of a reverse cut, a reverse curve coming up to the drip rail, this edge, the edge of that reverse curve is gonna need a little bit of stretch to allow this to kind of fall in a little bit. So I'm gonna kind of block this area a little bit, try and um, ask it to go in a little and just stretch just the edge a little bit with the kick shrinker. So as I'm stepping, I'm, I'm just kind of pulling up a little bit. Okay, there. So that's got to just bend in. It's touching right there. So.
I guess the, uh, the recess on this side isn't the same as the recess on that side. This is already, well, I guess there's a little bit of lead still in there that hasn't been fully dug out, but I've got my recess kind of going a little bit further down to, down to about here. And this is already, yeah, his, I guess this one stops about that. Looks like you need this. <laughs> it was like, just bash it in, cave and pave. See where we're at here. It's actually pretty good. Like yeah. it fits, it fits pretty good. It doesn't need a whole lot. I guess tools are faster. <laughs> Machines are faster sometimes, guys. This might be a little bit high. Might be a touch high. Because I've got a little bit of a raise here, I'm gonna wheel this edge a little bit just to allow it to, uh, to kind of release that crown. See if we got it. No, it needs lots. You can run it straight in as well to help kind of like linearly stretch a little bit. I think I shrunk this little edge too much here, so I'm gonna relieve that as well. See, sometimes the tools, they, they go too far. Just little bits of taking it too far. All right, so the power tools definitely got us to this stage quicker than the hand tools, but now we're at the same point we're fitting. So we're checking, we're modifying, we're checking, we're modifying. Um, right at this point, let's, uh, I'm gonna clean this off and then we'll just kind of assess the situation, start fresh, okay? Yeah, let's have a look at this piece. So these marks are from the power hammer. And when I say marks, there's like, it's just imprinting the smooth dies on the material. And um, we did use it a little bit to kind of just knock that edge in. You can see a little bit of marks there. So as far as beating up the material, um, the material stays a little bit nicer. Uh, we definitely did put marks in it from the shrinker stretcher. So right now, ooh, we almost lost our lineup points, but I can still see it. It's right here. We got one there. We got one there. So where are we at? 
Okay. The bottom is looking pretty good, actually. I, I think that uh, the flow of this, if, if you kind of have a look at it from this way, this flow looks good. Like, I don't think there's anything wrong with that. We're fitting quite tight. We do have a little bit of form to put in here just to, just to bring this closer, but I think that's quite minor. Um, seems like it needs maybe from here over that way to have a little bit more roll to tighten this up. That's about it for that. This edge here is standing up a little bit. Um, that could be one of many things. I'm kind of just bending it and looking at it. It is pivoting off of all the way down here. Somewhere, where is it? So that could just be a twist actually. Okay, so that actually fits great and, and, and lines up, but now this is what really needs the attention is the form of this here going down. So like this edge is touching the drip rail, it needs to go down. So the trough that we started making here, I think goes a little further. So the center of the trough is maybe here instead of over here. So we're gonna have to block that in. So we'll go to the sandbag now. We'll just block that in. Um, we could actually do that on the power hammer also. If we bring that down and kind of turn it, yeah, we might be able to just kind of massage it on the power hammer. Let's do it. So I'm gonna have to flatten out some of this. I'm gonna flatten out some of this and then I'm gonna turn a little bit of that. So I'm essentially moving that line um, that that bend over a little bit. So let me just see if I can So I did kind of erase the line a little bit. Now I'm going to just add the bend in a little bit further over. See if that did it. Yeah, it definitely helped. Definitely helped move it over. I think that down here still needs more attention where this has to actually roll in a little bit tighter in that spot. So um, let's line ourselves up again here. Yeah, we are lined up. We just need to tip this in. We need to tip that in and we might need a little bit more shrinking here. Or it might just be some form. We're gonna tip this in first. See how I'm hitting it lightly? You don't even hear like metal smacking metal. Um, it's just using it gingerly. You can kind of just knock stuff around. Like I said though, I think, I think it does need some shrinking there. We'll see, Let's see where we're at here.
Oh yeah. Now we're cooking with gas. I mean, that's almost it. We've got a little bit more to do. Elio, come have a look at the top here. So this is all looking good, but still just fitting this in a little bit is what we're fighting. So it looks like it's the bottom of this right here. It's a flat spot. You can actually even see that it's a flat spot. So in order to bring that right over, I've got to stretch a little bit more in this spot to bring it down. So I'm gonna use this aggressive little stretching hammer and we're gonna go just do this by hand. So we've got a nice curve on this dolly in this direction, which is what we want here. And then we also need to spread the material apart to allow this shape to occur. I think right in that spot too, we might. Now we're getting tighter. Look at that. Okay, I'm ready to put a Clico on it. Okay, this way now, from now on, every time we check it, it'll be in the same spot. So there is a little bit that we can mess around there. Um, let's just get this thing dialed in before we do that bead roll. So I think right here, we just gotta take, there's like a little bit of a peak in that, so we just gotta knock that out by hand. That's not really a big deal. This flow looks good. Down here, that all actually looks really nice and tight. Looks really good. Okay, so I'm just gonna address that little spot and then we're gonna mark it well, I guess we can cut it while it's off too. I'm just gonna trim it for the bead roll here. This is like a bit of a guessing game too, cause the die of the bead roller, like, might have to be tuned up by hand anyway. If you really wanted to nail a shape like this, you could make a, a piece for the reciprocating hammer, like a profile die for the reciprocating hammer to really nail it. But um, I mean, we did that one over just a hand, you know, T dolly. So uh, the fact that we're trying a bead roller is just kind of an experiment. We're still gonna need to shrink it and mess around with it after the bead roller because, uh, or sorry, stretch it after the bead roller because it's not gonna be able to stretch it while we're bead rolling. So we're still gonna have work to do. So this is just that little hump. Just that little hump shouldn't be there. So I'll just take that out real quick. Literally all it was. Tiny little bump. There you go. Uh, bye bye. <laughs> okay. Trim this just by hand. Okay, the dies we're gonna use for the bead roller are these ones. Um, this is a rollover die. So that'll be the lower die and it's got this little fence. So we'll be able to butt the sheet metal right up to that, push against it so that we have an even amount of roll put into it. That'll be the top and it's gonna give us that roll. I already checked these on the car. They're pretty much identical. But like I say, because there is you know, a little bit of a flare here. There's also this curve. When you roll something over, it ends up needing more material. So it needs to be stretched. Um, if you think about a dome, when, when the shape is like a convex shape, it needs to shrink to come around. 
but when it's a concave shape, then it needs to stretch to go in there. So um, that's something that we're gonna have to work through, I suppose. Okay, should be interesting. Ooh. I think I'm gonna stand at the front of the machine for this. Can you go upside down? So Oops. the die is on the other side right now. I guess same thing. Try and go a little slower. Oh, did you unplug it or something happened there? Interesting. I don't know if I like how that feels. <laughs> feels fine here. It's just really hard on the sharp spot, like. Yeah, actually, that was nice. That felt nice. It's almost the limit of the curve, you know what I mean? Yeah. Man, that is actually doing a very nice job. That is way easier than <laughs> hammering it on a T-Dolly, but Feels like it just wants to go through now. I'm just keeping pressure in as steady as I can the whole time. Trying to follow it. It's tracking itself pretty well, but I'm trying to just help it out. Okay, let's go see it, because I think that that actually put the whole thing in. Really didn't distort it too much either, which is kind of, kind of cool. Sleep. Where are we here? Pleco, set so we'll the Pleco's in, put it right back to where we were. Not bad, not bad. I'd say not bad. It's not bad. I do think it needs a little bit of, like it seems like bubbled up a little bit there and that's because we rolled it over and we didn't stretch that edge. So it's essentially trying to, trying to do this. So um, what we could do is just kind of kick kick stretch that edge just a little bit and then maybe run it through again. Yeah, you can see that, right? You can see this yeah. in it. Or I wonder if we could just pull up while we do this. I think we could probably just give it a bit of a pull. You might not even, like if I go through really slow and just kind of force, just put a little bit of my forces on it. I feel like it's gonna have to. It's gonna have to obey me. Yeah, we'll see. I did that. And eh, not totally. Definitely needs a little stretch right there. Yeah, that already looks straighter. Okay, I'm gonna run it through again. It's 
looking pretty good. I'm still gonna tune it up on this tea dolly, man. <laughs> We've got some like kind of bites in it from little bites in it from the shrinker or the stretcher. like this. Ooh. Oh yeah, I like that. There it is. There it is, guys. Pretty happy with it. That, uh, that rolling with the bead roller, I mean, that, that did work. Could be a little bit closer in, like maybe, yeah. We'll have to see when we cut it, how that looks. Might have to touch it up with a dolly. Yeah, it might just need a little bit more. Yeah, not really, we'll have to see. We'll have to see. Um, yeah, let's just clean it off real quick here. Okay, well I suppose that the nice thing about using the power tools is saves you a little bit of time. It's probably twice as fast than doing it this way, but um, you, you touch the metal a little bit less. Like this had to look worse to look this good. This never really ended up getting a bunch of rough texture um, put into the sheet metal. You basically have enough power to just stretch and smooth and, and uh, and do it that way. But in the end, we've got the same exact result. Um, you know, I think the pieces are, are damn near identical. You know, the, um, the backsides look identical, basically. But I guess, um, should we DA it? You wanna DA it? Okay, yeah. then, then they'll look exactly the same, right? Oh, thank you, sir. Look at that. Didn't even have to get up. I mean, we could have used the planishing hammer, I suppose, and got out, like, cause I planished that other piece and I got out all the hammer marks. So this one might actually not even look as good as the other one cause I didn't planish it all out. Well, there it is. Let me know what you guys think in the comments. What do you, I mean, are you for the machines? Do you think it's worth it? Um, you know, are you, are you guys gonna pursue this kind of stuff? And um, yeah, I just, wanna, I just wanna know your thoughts on these types of videos when I'm doing them because uh, I enjoy making them and, and I think that I'm learning as much as you guys are because this is the first time I've ever done this on a chop and uh, the first time I've ever made these panels. So um, it's been really cool doing this with you guys. So. Thank you very much for watching. Make it custom, everybody. Don't forget to like, click subscribe, hit notifications. If you wanna be part of the custom crew, membership is five bucks a month. There's a badge by your name, so that makes you easier to search in the comments and you get 15% off at the merch store, which is japanscustoms.com, where you can get in on the Mother Tucker hammers, you can get in on some of the other stuff that we sell, t-shirts, hats, keychains, whatever. Thanks for your support, everybody. We'll catch you next time. See you later.